What is your earliest memory of singing? Church, of course. We'd sing, uh, who's come to Sunday school, Leslie, Leslie? Who's come to Sunday school, Leslie? Where should I be looking there? Is that look okay or there? Yeah, we were just talking, I was just talking about this. I wondered if putting your face to, so close to the camera was an artistic choice. Oh, For I don't know. I, this is where I've always done it. Let's see. Is that better? You're all, better? yeah, you're in full view. Yep. Okay. Let's see this. This is, go down. You're in the room that made you famous. It's <laughs> the only room I've got. <laughs> where is this? Are, are we in the living room? No, we're in my bedroom. It's the only place that I get really good vi um, internet reception. Yeah. I'm in the heart of Hollywood. I don't know why, but for some reason, <laughs> and I've got everything set up. And so, you know, there's my bed. The lighting is good. The lighting is really good. Yeah, I think it's really good. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Sometimes I feel like this right by the window, but here we go. A little bit better. Congratulations, first of all, on like surviving and thriving in a pandemic. Like, look at you. <laughs> You're just giddy as all can be. Well, give me a good pandemic. I just flourished. You know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why that is or how that happened, but I did. I think people were looking for, you know, just some laughter. Well, hello, fellow hunker down. This is one of those days I just went to pee and I had my under pants on the inside out and i started that um instagram i was in tennessee with my mom and i didn't have a lot to do i knew we were gonna i before the stay at home orders uh came i knew i said to my mom they're gonna make us all stay home she said oh no they're not and so the next day they made the announcement and i thought you know i'm gonna stay here i'd rather stay here with my mom and my I have identical twin sisters. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a dog and pony show. But anyway, <laughs> I, so I, um, I didn't have much to do. So I just started being funny. And without knowing, I, I didn't do anything that had anything to do with, I had three rules in retrospect that I realized I had and didn't know I had nothing about religion, nothing about politics and no products. I'm kind of wanting to rethink that no products part because I think I'd be rich. You could really be making some bank right now, Leslie. Hey, I'd be set for life. I mean, all the free swag. Uh, well, I get that. That comes in the mail. It's weird. It scares me because they have my home address. I don't know how, but things come every day something. What's the, the coolest thing that you've got recently? I got these shoes that you tap. You know, you do like a tap and, and a roller skates come out. <laughs> what? <laughs> where I wear them. <laughs> everywhere, everywhere is the answer. You'll wear them everywhere. That's the answer. <laughs> Go skating around. But I've gotten some pretty cool stuff. I got a box of like Brooks Brothers clothes, you know, and uh, I've really, uh, really enjoyed wearing all that. And I got... Um, what all did I get? It just comes every day. It's something new every day. <laughs> so, so you're back in your place after the uh, other day's meltdown in your car, which I saw because of the <laughs> the cleaning lady. Basically, uh, you you were forced out and you didn't know where to go. Uh, you're, I'm glad to see that you're back in a comfortable place. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> I am. I don't know if I said cleaning lady. It's it's not even a cleaning lady. It's my. I have a friend that started working for me a long, long time ago uh, named Bart Stevens, and he's a great, big, beautiful muscle boy. He's huge. <laughs> We're just friends. We've always just been friends, but he's huge. And he loves to, uh, besides lifting weights and running and everything, he loves to clean and also iron. He irons everything in the house. It's so funny to see him. He'll put that ironing board up and iron my sheets. And what is anyway, what what is he know, wearing so. during all of this? I mean, if anything, what's that? What is he wearing during all of this? Oh, he just wears his gym clothes. Oh, he wears it. Well, that's fine. I'd take that. I mean, I would take. I would take. Listen, Leslie. I would take any muscle boy in my house right now, cleaning my clothes and ironing my clothes. 
<laughs> I make him put on a little French made costume. <laughs> Honestly, that's it's hilarious. That's what I had in mind. <laughs> um, I I have to say, so I just had this conversation with my housemate here because we are both aging gays. Um, and I look, I look to you as inspiration because you are 65 and you are in your prime, I would say. And so people telling me all the time that like for gay people who get older, you know, we're, it's hopeless. You know, there's nothing left for us after a certain age. You have completely turned that upside down. Oh, that's so kind to say, because I remember, um, my fifties were tough I, or, you know, there was a time where you do realize, Oh my God. I mean, as you get older, you walk down the street, people don't even look at you. It's weird the way we treat people that are older and especially in West Hollywood, you know, where everybody wants to be young and beautiful. But I think we're past that as a gay community. I hope, you know, I think that also had a lot to do with the bar scene, which, uh, you know, has been curtailed. So, but even before that, I think, you know, back in my day, like, in you know, the, the, I got here in, 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 uh, when did I get to California? But the only thing in 82, 82. I think the, it was 82. Yeah. You know, all you had were the bars, you would go to the bars, you know, that's just where you went to see other gay people and meet other gay people. And now I think, you know, my gosh, we have everything. We have ch choirs and we have, you know, p p gay camping, we have gay this, we have gay that. There's a, a lot of ways, and plus the internet, you know, where you can meet people and, and find out what's going on and everything. So I think, uh, yeah, I, I, I like that now, you know, older gays who can see my generation, you know, we went through so much. I remember once I walked up to these young kids, they were holding hands in Kitchen 24, mm -hmm. and I just said something. I walked up and I said, oh, you have no idea what we went through, you know, to, so you guys, and then all of a sudden it hit me. Oh my God, I don't want to be that. Like, you know, your granddad who would say, you kids have no idea, you know, what we went through. I thought, oh my God, yeah. it's the same thing. Cause they were like, yeah, uh-huh. Like go on, Papa. But uh, <laughs> they were very appreciative. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it feel like right now is kind of a new beginning for you or just the beginning in a lot of ways? You know, I, I'm, as you said, I'm 65 and I have achieved everything I came to Hollywood to achieve. You know, I've been, I've done Broadway. I've done, you know, film. I've done a lot of television. I've done, you know, I have this series now on the air and it looks like it's pulling some numbers. It may stay around for a little while, which is, a wonderful thing to know as an actor. I have a job. Oh my gosh, I have a job. Yeah, I love that you say people think that you're 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 rich. Um, and I'm you, not. You got to work hard. Yeah. I listen. She works hard for the money, <laughs> but I I've never you know. Um, but it it doesn't feel. I think what it feels like is that I've achieved everything, and also I've I'm. I'm more comfortable with myself. I'm perfectly comfortable. There was a lot of, you know, I got sober in, um, it was 22 years ago. You know, I, I had a little drinking problem and we were doing, I might've done a tiny bit of crystal meth. I got clean and sober and all of a sudden I realized that I was just riddled with internal homophobia. You know, 42 years old and here I was, the you know, running life of the party, this and that. But all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm faced with that. And my journey into, my sobriety, which has been the last 22 years, has also been a real good journey, you know, into my queerdom, you know, to where it was a lot of, uh, you know, therapy. And, and then, of course, you go to your meetings. So that's talk therapy. And uh, then I had to go to a, a recovery program because I had too many meetings. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to so many meetings. I thought I'm addicted to meetings. I got to go to recovery. <laughs> get over going to meetings but it was a wonderful way to find you know out of, and I sit here so comfortable with myself with who I am and what I am and that's a wonderful place to be and so everything from here on out is just like gravy you yeah. know it's just it's like it really is just living <laughs> life one day at a time and having a really good time 
I mean, I think you can say that now because you have finally um, met Dolly Parton. And I know that's that, it. that was now it. Now all I ask myself is, well, what would Dolly do? She's a sterling human being. Oh, my gosh. I got to meet her and I just really people say, well, what was Dolly Parton like? You know, you know exactly what she's like. She's exactly like what like, you think she's like. Have you ever met a unicorn? It's like meeting a unicorn, you know? <laughs> yeah. What, she's so what was um, the first thing that you said to Dolly when you met her? Well, we were, she was, I was in Nashville um, recording. I have a, a gospel album coming out. And I'm not going to talk a whole lot about because it's uh, everybody's not set. But but anyway, we were recording and um, uh, uh, Dolly was at a uh, was supposed was going to record. Well, anyway, she was at a, a, a studio near us and uh, she said, drop by and have him meet me because I want to meet him. But she said, I record, you know, on my own. Like you send me, you get the musicians and you lay your tracks and she just does it. You know, it's it's amazing. I think that's the way you do things with COVID now. You know, you're you're they're musicians and everybody aren't in one big room. But anyway, I went to the studio and uh, she was sitting there and being doing a some sort of feed for like Good Morning America or something. And I was in the green room and I had to look through this little um, mirror uh, window and it was just like the perfect way to see Dolly. Like you're just looking at a little porcelain doll and then she came in and and they ushered me in and the first thing that we said to each other we we tried to decide should we keep our masks on and we decided even though we were socially distanced and going to just talk but we decided we would and we just yammered I mean I just felt like you I just felt I was talking I felt like I've known her forever well, well I feel like we all feel like that in our head like everyone knows Dolly has a story about Dolly has a connection to Dolly um, Dolly did spill the beans when I interviewed her at the end of last year about her working on the album with you. And she didn't say too much because she knew that she couldn't, but she did say that you're working on, on a song. And I said that she should pull that song that she keeps talking about that apparently she's record, recorded called Just a Wee Bit Gay. I don't know if you've heard her talk about it. And I said, Leslie Jordan needs to be on that song with you, Dolly. I can't oh, think of a better person. Many. Just a Wee Bit Gay. Oh my God, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. It'd be wonderful. What can you say about the song that you guys have in the works? It's a it's an old, old, old hymn. It's one that she said to me. I sang that in church growing up. Mm. I've sang that hymn over and over and over again. And uh, so that's going to be the fun part is um, hearing what she does with her. I said, I wet my pants. When I hear her singing this song with me, I wet my pants. <laughs> And do you know that the name of that hymn escapes me? I'm not trying to be cagey. I yeah. cannot, I swear to you, I cannot. To Canaan's land, I'm on my way. Where the soul of man. It's called soul oh. of man. Oh. oh, that was, I loved, I loved just hearing you just for, I'm glad you couldn't find the name of the song because I got to hear you sing for a moment. That was really nice. I, uh, I'm also really happy that you're releasing um an album. I don't think anyone could have seen this coming. I mean, there's a lot in the world we couldn't have seen coming, but. <laughs> you know, I was just uh, my friend, Travis Howard and uh, his, his uh, producing partner in Nashville, uh, Danny Myrick, we would record Sunday hymns and just put them on the internet, just the two of us. And it was so popular on, on Instagram and people said, well, you should do an album. And I thought, well, I'm not a singer, really, you know. I've got the kind of voice that's good for a hymn, but I'm not a singer. I've never, you know, I've, but anyway, so we, the response was just unbelievable of people who said, I'll be on that album with you. Everybody we asked. What's, so, your, uh, what's your earliest memory of singing? Church, of course. We sing, uh, who's come to Sunday school, Leslie, Leslie. Who's come to Sunday school, Leslie? Oh, I love that so much. <laughs> You're also, the, there's a book coming out. I mean, this is what I'm saying, Leslie. You are doing it all right now. But I'm so excited about this book because this isn't the first time that you've written a book. Um, and I just love hearing you, but I also love reading your writing. What are we going to learn? 
what are we going to learn about you from the book that we don't already know? I don't know that you'll really learn anything because I wanted to make sure it wasn't, you know, in, in my trip down the pink carpet, I covered everything. Oh, this and that, my daddy and on and on. What I decided to do was take all my best dinner party stories. So I've got 12 um, stories that are just fun, just things, you know, that have happened to me, lessons I have learned a little bit, but not much about me, just life in general. Um, my favorite of all of them is when I got to throw the first pitch out for the Washington Nationals, having never thrown a baseball in my life. And it's, a, it's the craziest story, and it involved the um, Pulse nightclub, uh, Dabacol with where 49 of my, well, 50, but I don't, I don't, anyway, the shooter was included. Yeah. 49 of my comrades yeah, yeah. Um, were senselessly murdered. But anyway, I am, um, I, I have a story about that, that I just love that involved. Um, I got to also tell that story because it was part of my one man show. And um, I got to tell it to Mrs. Obama. She was in the audience. Michelle Obama came to see me. Oh, my God. I did not know that. I mean, is there anything better than that? Wow. It was, it, you know, we closed. She wanted uh, 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 her assistant said, why don't you come over to the house and do the show for because they were in Palm Springs with six of her girlfriends. They were having a girl, a girl's weekend. And um, you joined them. And I said, <laughs> yes, I joined them. I said, well, they and then they call back and said, no, they want to come to the to the uh to the show they want to see it and so anyway it was wonderful it was just wonderful and i got uh i got to tell that story that's in oh. the book that ends the book oh i can't wait to read that one well um will any will any tea be spilled in the book well i don't think so certainly not about anybody else i made sure i don't like that when people talk ugly about other people yeah. I'm trying. That's my New Year's Eve resolution is to be really, really sweet and nice and not ever talk ugly or uh, I'm going to try to stop cussing. I don't know how to do that. I didn't know that you were. Well, I, I guess I didn't know that you were kind of a cusser. <laughs> I cuss not a lot, but I just don't want to cuss at all. You know, what's going to be the hardest so I'm trying to, for you to give up without saying it, of course. Which, probably the F word. I say that. <laughs> <laughs> Accidentally, <laughs> you've gone. You've gone twenty minutes with. Well, that. also shit, shit, because I use that so much. And well, shit, how y'all doing? So, well, shit. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, shit. But that's not a really bad word. I guess it is. I'll say well, shoot. <laughs> well, shoot. Well, crap. Well, crap. <laughs> you can always come up with something. There you go. I read the other day. You're not going to believe this. You know where crap came from? The toilet was invented by Mr. Crapper. <laughs> That's a true story. Well, <laughs> I think it's name was that Thomas Crapper, and that's how it started. The Crapper uh, to sit, you know, take a crap. You talked a little bit about Call Me Cat, but I do have a couple of questions about it. And one is about, I mean, really, I just want to make a comment and I'm curious to know what it was like to be there. But there's an episode where the cake shop is mis misperceived as homophobic. And then you gay it up, of course, with flags and rainbow balloons. And there's a cat named uh, Neil Catrick Harris. Uh, that seemed like a pretty gay day on set. <laughs> You know, what's interesting is it was just like another day. The The show is so gay friendly. We have uh, one uh, openly gay actor who plays the love interest, mm -hmm. Cheyenne Jackson and myself. And we, blah, 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 we never shut up. And of course, Maya is, uh, you know, just so gay friendly. I mean, everybody is even, um, even Julian, who is the masculine, oh, he loves, you know, he's big old butch boy. He, he, we, we educate him all the time. We'll say something to him, say, now, I don't understand what that means. And we'll say, oh, well, shh, shh, shh. Go, oh, my Lord. No, 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 too much, too much information. <laughs> we tell him everything. But we, you know, what I, what I hope comes through, 
I told Maya that this was my favorite job ever. And she said, oh, you probably say that all the time. I said, no, I'm dead serious. It's a job in which I really look forward to coming to work. I love the people. I love the writing. You know, Darling Hunt, our writer, is just hilarious. She's from Louisville, Kentucky. So I'm the kind of the real Southern voice. You know, I'm the one that really puts out, you know, hey, 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 we're in Louisville. Yeah. Um, and so she uh, she loves writing for me. She loves to write me monologues. And I said to her, it, they came to me the other day and said, now, are you having trouble memorizing these? I said, yes, I'm having big trouble. Would you like cue cards? I said, well, no, it hadn't reached that yet. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Phoebe Tyler on the soap operas when I was a kid. Do you remember Phoebe Tyler? Oh, one yeah. of the soap operas. Yeah. She, she must have had a, they'd have to, because she would do these things where she would turn and look at her lines. <laughs> I said, she's reading it off the cue card. <laughs> she would say, well. <laughs> and then she would say her line. <laughs> so I, it hasn't reached that yet. They haven't had to give me cue cards. <laughs> Have you had, like, do you have any tricks for memorizing your lines? You know, someone told me a long time ago, if you do it right before you fall asleep, if you read those lines right when you're just about to fall asleep, you'll remember, that's bull hockey. That didn't work at all. No. And you you would know, because I, I think that you're, uh, you like to take naps on set. So <laughs> I love to take naps. Yeah. But, you know, the best way to learn your lines, the only way I know is through your business. I can't just sit like they'll go, you want to run lines? I can't do that. It doesn't help me. If I know that I'm going to pick up this uh, jug of iced tea in a mason jar, which I just really happen to have. I'm not like, you know, this is not like, oh, look how Southern I am. If I know I'm going to deliver a line, then I will remember it, you know, but then the next line. So I kind of learned that from Lily Tomlin. She's very business oriented. Lily drives the prop people crazy. You know, she'll say, do you have a rubber band and a roll of hundred dollar bills? They go, no. She goes, well, I, ne I need, you know, so she always coming up with something <laughs> to keep herself busy, which is a good acting trick. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, um, I was thinking, cause you know, I feel like there's a, there's a new generation of people who are Leslie Jordan fans now at this point, And I'm sure that you see that. Um, but I mean, to me who I've been following your career for a very long time. Uh, and so Star Trek, Murphy Brown, acting with George Clooney and bodies of evidence, uh, sorted lives. Uh, like we go back. <laughs> um, and so I wondered, um, for the kids who don't know your past, what should they know about your career in the eighties? What is something that you think should be spotlighted right now? Well, you know, I, 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 my first job ever was, was uh, the fall guy with Lee majors and I played a, a, a killer. I did six episodes. Murphy Brown came around about that time. I think people, what interests me is that my Instagram, which has just jumped to about like 5.6 million, how many people discovered me there that didn't know me? I think oh, I've been around forever. You know, I've forever I've been doing this. But I like the fact that I, I mistakenly thought, you know, people would know me from my roles. So they would think, you know, oh, Beverly Leslie on Will and Grace, you know, hey, well, 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 Karen Walker. You know, they think so, but no people my new fans know me as me you know they and then they'll watch me on stuff but they really and I think that's kind of nice that people you know are responding to me not some character that I play well that's I'm glad that you made that point because I think a lot of actors end up regretting a role that maybe they played that basically um was it became the only thing that they were known for they were known for mm -hmm. Like Tanya Roberts that just died, I thought, my God, bless her heart to go to your grave with Sheena, Queen of the Desert, you know? know. And she, you know, she did other things, but you're exactly right. You remembered for, you know, whatever that was. I don't, I can't think of anything I'm ashamed of. So what do you? Want? I wish I. You wish what? I wish I didn't hadn't have done. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you want to be remembered for while we're on this topic? I think I want to be remembered just as a, like, like a Dolly Parton that everybody, nobody had a bad word. 
you know, he was a nice guy. Uh, and the fact that I'm fairly talented and this and that, that's okay. But I just want people to, to know, you know, he was, he was good. He was a, he was a nice guy. He was, he was a good guy. Um, I think that's most important. And then I was raised right. You know, my sweet mother, please. Thank you. You know, um, I'm just appalled. So I want to say to kids, they said, who raised you? Yeah. Who raised you? <laughs> I think this is interesting to talk about because I wondered how maybe it had pigeonholed you before or how it affected your career versus now. But was your Southern accent and what you've sort of called gay voice always embraced like it is now? You know, I got to Hollywood and I thought I got to get rid of, there was a casting director that told me you need to, you need to, you're so, um, you're such a character actor already. And you're, you, I think, I think you should, if you could lose your Southern accent and I tried and I couldn't. And the day that I decided, well, this is just a marketable package here, um, was the day that I started working, but I, I worried more, I think, because of my internal homophobia about my gay accent, you know, and I would listen to myself and think, oh, girl, you got to calm down a little bit. <laughs> you know? and, and I, but I don't, I can't, I don't think that I ever lost a job. I was, you know, on Star Trek and they, they, were, I, they kept saying, you're a Ferengi, you I walked on the set and, and they said, we've got to get, and they hired a linguist and um, to teach me, you know, how to say the words and stuff. And she got so exasperated. She said, Mr. Jordan Feather doesn't have four syllables. Oh I said, Feather. <laughs> Feather. <laughs> Feather doesn't have four syllables. <laughs> but anyway, um, over the years, you know, it's just a mark. I don't think I'll ever be like, you know, Robert De Niro or Meryl Streep. I'll never just disappear into a row. I just do what I do in various forms of it. And, you know, it's worked thus far. Kept me afloat. People love it. People love you. I mean, it's clear. It's obvious. I mean, f five 5.5 million followers. It's pretty incredible. <laughs> um, I think I think next for you, based on what I've read, is um, is a pony farm. <laughs> That's it. I'm yeah. not looking yet. I'm hoping. I want to have I want to have a place to where I can go. I want a four stall barn. I want don't want it to be very big. Probably somewhere near Nashville, and you know, just to have a place that to me would just be heaven to have a place. You know, that's why I think if Kami Cat continues, then you've got the best of both. You've got that you're working, you're making really good money, but you also have those months off to to go. Yeah. You know. Decompress and pet the ponies. Mm hmm. Yeah. Have you ever had a pony? I'm riding already. I go out to the L.A. Equestrian Center, which is right out the front door. If you go to the side door of Warner Brothers toward Disney around there is the Los Angeles Equestrian Center. And I'm taking um uh, equitation saddle seat lessons i'm riding i'm doing pretty good yeah I've, I've ridden my whole life but i've never taken a lesson and you know then when you start taking lessons you realize oh there's a reason that you hold the bridle in a certain way and mm. so it's um it's fun i'm having a wonderful time i fell off the other day no. everybody freaked out freaked out listen but we, it wasn't it it I, was not the horse's fault the the watering truck went by and jeb who's just steady as could be just freak and he ducked sideways and i just i landed on my feet but um uh, I, my mother I, everybody said you be careful i mean yeah i gotta say like i don't care whose fault it is we got to protect you at all costs like you and dolly Parton, <laughs> we got to protect you at all costs <laughs> you can't go anywhere you can't go anywhere wrap me in bubble wrap i'll wrap you in bubble wrap for sure <laughs> All Thank right. you so much. This has been wonderful talking with you. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, it was it was really so great to talk to you and to meet you. And uh, I hope that, you know, when this is all over, you can get get on the road and, and get back to doing the one man shows in person. OK, I hope so. OK, talk Thank to you soon. You. Bye, Leslie. Bye. Bye. Let's see. How do you do? Lee.